Hello everyone! Today I'll be introducing you to Zoom, an app where you can have online meetings. I believe there are many people who are encouraged to work from home due to the spread of coronavirus. Zoom is used to hold meetings while being at home. There are many other apps like this too, but Zoom is currently one of the most well-known and popular apps. I also use it daily in my online community to hold seminars online. Remote work is strongly encouraged these days, so I really want everyone to learn how to use the app. What I want to do today is to show you the meeting I had on Zoom a while back with my iPad mates where we had a discussion regarding the newly released iPad. Let's use that as a reference to learn different functions that are available on Zoom. There are a few things I want you to know about Zoom before we start. You can purchase either a free or a professional version for your account. The Pro one costs around $20 per month or $200 per year. While the free account only allows your online meeting to last for 40 minutes, the Pro account has no limits. It also lets you save the online meeting in a video file. This means that you can send a video file to those who couldn't attend the meeting on live. The data can be saved in the cloud. All of my iPad Mates members purchased a yearly plan for this Pro account. Our seminar usually lasts for more than an hour, so we will not be able to focus if the session stops during the middle, as 40 minutes is the maximum for the free account. So I highly recommend getting a Pro account if your only meetings tend to last for more than an hour. Keeping these things in mind, I'll now start my tutorial. The video will be a bit long as there are many functions to cover, but I really appreciate it if you could watch this until the end. Let's open the app. This is the first screen you'll see. You mostly likely be using new meeting or join. If you're a moderator of the meeting, click on new meeting. If you want to join a meeting moderated by someone else, click on join. This time we'll select new meeting. Then click on call using internet. This is the very first screen. As a basic instruction, there is a mini bar at the top right corner. You can see options including mute, start video, share, and participants. If you select mute, your voice won't be heard at all to other viewers. If you click on stop the video, the camera will shut out like this. To check the participants of the meeting, click on Participants. For now, the only name is myself listed as the host of this meeting. So now let's ask my iPad mate to join this meeting. Click on Invite, then Copy URL. This creates a new link and other people will be able to join by accessing this link. I'll move to Slack and share this link, letting my iPad mates know that the meeting will be starting soon. All I have to do now is to wait on Zoom for them to join. Here they are. Can you see how new participants are being added to the list? Hello everyone! Whether it be through email or text messaging, as long as the Zoom link is shared, other people can join the meeting. A lot of people are participating. There are currently 13 people in this meeting. 
You can see who joined the meeting by referring to these small screens at the bottom. If you click on your own screen, you'll be enlarged on the iPad like this. But usually, the person speaking in at the moment will be displayed on a large screen. For this tutorial though, I'm the only one talking, so let's set it so that the person in the large display will be fixed as me. To do so, click on your own name from the participants list, then click on Spotlight Video. This settings makes my screen a large display for all the other participants joining the meeting as well. Moreover, Zoom also has a chat function. Click on Participants, then Chat. You can see that everyone sent messages here. Zoom isn't limited to a video call function, but it also allows you to chat through texting while calling. I'll say hello. Another important function to remember is the mute function. Here, there is an option called mute everyone. During the meeting, there may be some background noise disturbing other participants. When this happens, any moderators of the meeting can mute all the participants other than themselves. Turn on mute everyone, and as you can see, all the participants except for me is muted. This way, only my voice can be heard. All the functions I've just mentioned can be found in the participant category, including the chat function, members invitation, mute function, as well as the spotlight video function. There is also another category called details. And I want to introduce two things here. In virtual background, you can set different themes for your background. Look, we have space theme, plants, and you can even set a background that you created by yourself. If you don't want other participants to see what's behind you on camera, or perhaps your kids passing by, Setting in virtual background will be a great solution. Clicking this plus button will let you add a design of your own. For some reasons though, the camera flips horizontally when using the virtual background. Let's move on. If you select recording cloud, your online meeting will be video recorded for it to be saved on Zoom's cloud afterwards. So I highly recommend turning this function on in case you're someone who want to rewatch the video. When I have lessons for my iPad Maids members, I make sure to turn this recording function on so that other members who couldn't join the session can watch it in their free time later. At last, I want to talk about the sharing function. For now, the inner camera is working, meaning that the screen display what's seen through the inner lens. But for instance, if I click on photos, you see your own photos saving your camera roll. By choosing a photo from the list, you can share the photo of the participants of this meeting. Let's share a photo that I took during my trip to Spain. This photo is now displayed on everyone's screen while the inner camera is posed. There are many other elements to this sharing function. The whiteboard function is quite interesting. If you click on whiteboard, the screen becomes plain white. I'll be using the Apple Pencil to write any kinds of text or illustration on the screen. 
The screen is shared with the participants simultaneously. This can be used if you need to take notes during a meeting, We can also be shared with others. For example, I will jot down a discussion question, should I buy a new iPad Pro? There are also many detail settings that can be used on this whiteboard. For instance, if I click this arrow, I can adjust the size. I can also change the color of the pen. As you can see in this Zoom meeting, we can share one whiteboard all together. Since I'll be buying a new iPad Pro, I'll write my name below. This isn't how the whiteboard is usually used in an online meeting, of course. But during a meeting, one person can be a note taker to jot down some important points of the meeting. There is also a function to save this whiteboard as a photo in your camera roll. It might be a good idea to share this photo with all the participants once the meeting is over. To go back to the original screen, click on Stop Sharing. This sums up the important points of Zoom. I usually keep everyone on mute and use the text messaging function to chat with them. It's a very useful app, so I highly suggest giving it a try. I know that there are many people working from home now due to the spread of coronavirus, so you should really master how to use it for sure. In my iPadMate community, we often use Zoom to hold tutorial classes, so please join us if you're interested. You can use your iPad or even your iPhone to join meetings on Zoom. If you prefer to use your iPhone, you can use a stand like this. You can also download the Zoom app on your Mac. I personally don't recommend using an iPad actually, as you can't control your camera angles while well, you can freely on iPhone or Mac. Especially girls, you might be worried about how you look on camera during a meeting, so in that sense, iPad may not be the best choice. But for those who don't really care, the screen is big and you can use the chat function with ease on iPad, so feel free to try it out. Anyway, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching my video. To end the meeting, click here. Bye bye everyone!